Good morning and welcome to our devotional here on this Friday. Again, pray blessing over you. I believe that God um, has brought you through another week. It's hard to believe that we are already, you know, almost ending the month of February. It's an amazing two months have been under about, just felt like I had the Christmas tree up and we were uh, putting up the decorations not so long ago, but um, here we are, right? Um, but uh, I, I pray that this this uh, this devotional finds you doing well and that you are blessed. Um, our, um, our title for this devotional is called Our Future. And it's based on a scripture found in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse number 11. And it's a popular scripture. I'm sure you may even know by heart. But it says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. I think we've all heard this uh, scripture at one point in our life, whether it's through a teaching, uh, a, a um, encouragement from maybe a brother or sister in Christ. Sometimes someone speaks something over our life or just a general sermon. But... The purpose of this one I, I wanted to share with you, it, it kind of, uh, my thoughts are, are, are this, and, and let me share. Um, I remember studying, reading, and, and even experiencing in my own personal life how God's grace, His mercy, and love is forever looking over my life. Um, I've learned that as I lay my head down at night, um, and as I go to sleep, God is already preparing my tomorrow. Isn't that beautiful? That while I am looking out for the ending of my day, God is looking for the beginning of the next. And um, he's watching over my future. He's looking for the benefits that can help me in my life, whether that's sometimes helping me through a struggle or helping me avoid it. I don't know why, but the Lord always brings uh, what is most important into my life. He is making all things work for the good. That's what the scripture tells us, right? The future is in his hands. That's basically um, the best way of describing it. No one can truly say that they uh, know exactly what awaits for them tomorrow. Now, here's the point. You can probably say, well, pastor, wait a second. You know, I have plans. I make appointments. I know exactly what I'm going to do. But you don't really know how that's completely going to work out. I mean, if you have a doctor's appointment, do you know what news it's going to give you? Um, do you have an appointment to or a, a, a reservation? Do you know what you're going to eat? Um, not always necessarily. Do you know what waiter is going to help you? Do you know exactly if it's going to be good service or bad service? Um, we generally make our decisions based on a good idea, maybe a feeling, uh, maybe previous experience. But that doesn't promise you know exactly how things are going to work out. This reality is we just have a notion, uh, an idea, a possibility of what is what it can feel like. But in reality, the exact description of all that will happen and be, we don't know that. But here's the thing. God does. He knows exactly that red light that he needs to hold you up to help you avoid that accident. He knows exactly that that food that you don't order because you may get food poisoning and you'll be messed up, right? He knows exactly that maybe you need to arrive at work a little bit later because there's going to be that crazy customer that you, you always pushes the wrong button on you and he's trying to protect you and watch over you. I mean, there's a lot of things that God does. He also he allows us sometimes to face struggle. He allows us to experience maybe that difficult customer or maybe deal with a difficult situation or have a family issue that you have to overcome or a financial one where you have to just put your trust in God. But in truth, he knows all the plans, every single one of them. Why? Because the future is in his hands. It's not necessary to completely know. That's just a reality. I don't think we have to know, but I do think we need to know who does know. And that's what I want you to know is that our future is in His hands. Jesus holds the future in His hands. He knows the best way for our future. We follow His leading. We, he knows exactly where we should go to be exact, he, what we should say on the right way. I share my testimony that I had no plans of ever coming to Southern California. I had no plans of ever even staying here in Southern California. Um, I had no plans whatsoever of ever leaving our home in Northern Cal. I thought I would go to school over there. I would uh, become a chemist. That's what I wanted to do. Attend the school of my choice. And God had different plans. And he knew what the right plan was. That plan brought me to a church that embraced me, loved me, took a chance on me when I didn't even know, but three chords on the piano. Um, it, it, it helped me walk through to find my beautiful wife and my family. This is where my kids have grown up. This is the church they have only known all their lives. The people that have walked through these doors, the pastor that was here before, uh, Pastor David, uh, was a very dear, dear, not only a pastor, but a friend, Sister Paula, equally. And um, I, I just say to you that I didn't have those plans. 
I never thought those plans were going to be my plans. But Jesus says that he has the plan for us. He knows exactly the right way for us. And why do we know that? Well, the Bible tells us in John 14, 6, that Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. He's the way. He knows exactly the right way for our lives because he is the way to get to the Lord. He is the way to get to God himself. One day we will see him. We are able to live in peace and certainly, guys, because of what we know and our future is all about, we are safe and secure in the Lord. Our lives are on a path that leads us home, to the home that is our final destination, the place where we'll be able to spend eternity, to see our loved ones and enjoy life forever. It is an example for others to see that we are so centered on knowing where we are going. That is our future and that is our hope. I close with this verse and found in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 16. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. I think all of our lives have that kind of testimony that people can see that we were the worst and God did something and now we can point them to the cross and finally, of course, to the Lord himself where we can spend eternity with him. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Thank you, Father, for our lives. We're blessed. I, I, I don't know how we count all the blessings, but I know that we're aware of some. And so, Lord, my prayer here um, is that you would not only help us, that you would not only guide us, Lord, but that you would remind us, Lord. Let us be ever present, God, to understand what you have done and how you've brought us to the places where each of us are at in our life. We just didn't get there on our own. There's no way that we could take credit for that. But you know also the future. You know exactly where we're headed. And you know the obstacles. You know the successes that we will have, the triumphs, God, even sometimes the pains and the sorrows. But we will arrive because of your mercy and your grace. There's a great song that says, where would I be without your grace? I believe that, God. I don't know where I would end up. But I know this one thing, that you are in control and my life is in your hands. So I pray that over the children that are listening here, God, let us see that our lives are in your hands and that you are doing the very best for our lives. I pray a blessing over your children. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and may he give you peace through this week. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our devotional here on this Friday. And tomorrow is our work. That's technically more of a project day. Um, and so we don't do any cleaning, but we definitely do projects. So the Little House has been a project for some time now, and we continue to labor. It's a labor of love, I think, as we continue to do improvements. But now we've gotten the kitchen for the most part done. We still have a few more things to get done. We have new countertops, new painting, uh, repairs that were on the roof that needed to be done. I'm excited about that. Uh, we're working on the bathroom. That should be done very soon. And uh, some electrical and lighting that's coming up as well. And then, oh, the big project of uh, carpet and all that good stuff is still down the line. We have some volunteers that have said, I'm here to help. I'm grateful for those volunteers and we will call upon them when that that uh, that part of the project is, is come up. But if you want to come out and help, we're here on Saturdays at 10 a.m. We usually stay no more than two or three hours. Sometimes we're longer, but hey, whatever you can stay, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. But I want to invite you back on Sunday. This is a second um, part of our series, Mourn Again, and it's really, um, really dealing with repentance and humility in our life. And and um, I pray that, um, you know, sometimes we have to prepare ourselves to be reminded of the great sacrifice that the Lord has done for us. It's going to lead us up to Resurrection Sunday. So I encourage you to listen in. Again, it's at 10 a.m. in person, preferably have you here. Uh, or if not, we can also catch you on Facebook Live. Lord bless you. Thanks for joining us.